parts are in. It took forever. Thank you for bearing with me. You know, COVID, shipping, all this stuff. It's wild stuff going on on this planet. So I've literally never had to wait for parts, but spoiled life. Thank you, Summit. Um, but I had to wait like three months for this. So uh, yeah, this is what we got going on, man. So quick performance, nine inch, 35 spline axles, three inch by half inch studs. Uh, that's a true track uh, Eden Posi again 35 spine nodular case um, Global West Viking coilover kit which I'll get into but this brake conversion it's everything man the lines um, I'm gonna have to mount fittings and for the brake lines and all kind of stuff so, you know how I do, enough talking, back to it. So what I'm trying to do here, this is just mock-up. I just wanted to get this caliper mounted to where it will be so that I can figure out where I need to mount these tabs. Uh, let me see if I can find that tab. Though. So what I'm trying to do is mount these tabs. I'm gonna have to weld them to the housing. So these can go through here, like that basically. Basically it'll be like how that is. But instead of the tab being bolted on, it's gonna be welded to the housing. Take this off. This just mounts the center piece for the split. Um, what I'm gonna try and do is measure these ears, see how different, if at all, from the nine inch, and then just put it in the center. It looks like it's pretty dead center, so I might just put a dead center of those. Um, I just don't want this to be too short. They sell a bunch of different lengths for this, so worst case scenario, I can get another one. But the one I have in there is brand new. So, so what I'm going to do is take this off. I'm either going to make a shorter bolt or, um, I don't know, weld a nut on the housing or something. Or just weld the bracket to the housing entirely. I'm not sure, but that's what I got to do now. So. So as you've seen, doing the brake lines, welding those mounts. So here's the outcome. Uh, next, I gotta paint it. Um, my welds. <clears throat> I'm purposely not gonna turn the light on because y'all don't need to see it that good. But it came out pretty good. I mean, if you think this is a weld that someone does professionally, okay? That's all they do all day long is lay the same beads on the same kind of metal. This is kind of crap. See a little cold there. I just went over a little bead. But overall, I think it's it came out pretty good. It ain't definitely gonna come off. I mean, damn. <laughs> you don't need that much there, so. Oh, and then I welded on this one. You can't really see, but yeah, that's basically it. So this is the mouth that was on the old 12 volt. Yeah, that's it. Um, now I gotta take these brake lines off, prep the rear end for paint. One's quick performance hooked it up with these, so what I'm gonna do is weld those. They bolt in, but I'm gonna weld them in um, when it comes time to do that. So I'm just gonna weld those, but I wanna mount that bar and mount the shocks first to see 
what angle that is gonna like down there. So it is out. I'm gonna try and, I'm probably just gonna put it online for like 50 bucks. Cause yeah, I needed it out of my garage. So it sucked. It wasn't as bad as putting it in, I can tell you that much. Now I have to pull that other shock out. There's like blind nuts on the top. It's no fun. Is the U-joint is different, which I figured. Um, cause that's a Pontiac 12 volt. So that's a, probably a 1350 yoke in that, um, housing. So go figure. It's okay. Because when I put this in, the drive shaft was a little too long. So I only had like maybe a quarter of an inch play, um, around an inch I'd feel a lot better about. So we'll see if it's still the same when I put in this newer in. But it looks like I'm going to have to change that yoke, which they have adapter yokes and all that, so that doesn't matter. But if I can shorten the drive shaft, then I can have them put the correct U-joint on that as well. And rebalance it, because I've had that for a while. It's supposed to be rated for 800, but anyway, so yeah, rear end is out. I still have this one shock left. It's got those blind uh, nuts. So I'm just gonna cut them out tomorrow because they suck. Because you can't see where you're putting the open end. It's probably my least favorite part about working on the Chevelle is those. And being I don't need them anymore because I have this, I'm gonna cut them the hell out of there. So and it's time to paint. Should be able to get it in. So, all right, back to it. All my A body guys know that rear shock bolt is blind. So you can't see it. And what the hell kind of the hell kind of nut is that? What size is that? Come on. Anyways, it's in a blind spot. It sucks. So I just cut it out because <laughs> I'm not using those anyways. So um, yeah, shocks out. Whole rear end is out. So about to get to it. I think it'll look great. So that's going to be gloss red. And then that will be gloss black. came out pretty dope I didn't paint the rear end yet because that's gonna suck when you use the POR 15 just a tip so it gets tacky and it's like super tacky so if you catch any runs like see there's a run right so if you see any runs what you can do is just dab it a little bit or brush it even and you see it looks like shit right now but when it uh, levels out it'll level itself out as it dries and it will smooth out so any runs that you catch if you catch them early enough you can hit them like that sorry I got the washing machine going but now I have to slide this under the car bolt it all up mount the coilovers and see where these mounts are gonna land because I gotta weld those in before I paint this thing. So that's gonna be fun. <laughs> All right. Okay, that sucked. 
another reason why you should run heim joints instead of them stupid rubber bushings that one was binding so it didn't want to come and go in so all right so this is in now what i'm gonna do is hang the coilovers try and get the angle for this mount right here so i can weld it in so all right back to it so the hard part is done it's welded in so i'm gonna go over this more when i do the coilover video which should be the video after next the next one's going to be about the brakes i'm going to break it all down but i'll go over what i had to do to make these brackets work for the global west coilover kit um i just wanted to include it in here because it had to do with the housing this will be a housing video then we'll have the next one will be the brakes the one after that will be the coilover so all right um and then i still got to change these but so as you see in there, I was hitting, I was trying to get rid of these little scars. I think they'll cover up with the, um, the POR 15. So I just went over the housing just a little bit, just to get the little nicks. There was like some pitting here, uh, but yeah, it's going to look sick. I think I'm glad that's done. That's like a big relief that took forever. Yeah. Enough talking. I got to paint this thing. It's going to suck. Um, got to figure out how I'm going to hold it up. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll figure it out. You know I will. So, all right, back to it. All right, so we got this rear end done. <clears throat> Painted, prepped, all the parts are here. Um, I just got to assemble it now. So, um, that's just POR 15, engine enamel black. I mean, it came out decent. It's not my best, but definitely will do. It's under the car, so and again this will be changed because i'm going to short probably end up shortening the housing when i do the mini tub which is way 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 down the line so um really i might do some crazy rear end stuff and sell this but that's a long ways away you guys know why i got this i explained it if you didn't go check the other videos it'll explain it to you so uh yeah now i just gotta put these studs in the housing change these um, rear ears to these R joints. I don't think I showed these, but so these will go in the place of those rubber bushings. Um, they'll have way more movement than the rubber. That's like stock rubber. They came with the rear end. Um, yeah. So I believe these for a ride tech number so I'm changing these bushings I'm taking out the old ones this side's not that bad um, but I kept having to shrink it and thread out the, the bolt and re-thread it this one was binding so bad I had to re-drill the hole turns out the the little sleeve they used had split and it was pinching it so drilled it out got this in here but it was still kind of hard to get in there so i just hammered it tightened it re-tightened the thing down to drive it out and do it again so putting it in was way easier it's just me just putting them in again i had to tighten it because i don't have a deep socket <laughs> that'll fit that so i had to tighten it and then back it off and tighten it and back it off and i kept hitting reverse instead of drive taking the whole thing apart it was really fun it was awesome switched it around on this side it Anyways, it's not that hard, but you know, when you're special, it just takes longer. So, just cleaning that one off, just doing the other side. This side went in way easier than that side, now that I had done one of them, so. Uh, many videos online on how to do just this. So, there's a guy that's building a GTO. I, I forgot his name. If I can remember to put it in here, I'll put it in here, but he's got a great video on how to do these. Um, yeah, that's it, man. Just getting it in, cleaning it up. On to the next one. So the R joints are in. I think they look sick. I was scared that that paint wasn't going to hold up. Um, so these come with it. They just sit like so. They sit on both sides. And that's it. So that way this can move way more freely. Um, than the bushings so 
and I already have uh, these kind of joints on the upper side so I'll have way more articulation should perform a little bit better you know at one less deflection so you get more of your power to the ground two that's not why I'm doing it I'm doing it more for uh, cornering purposes get more articulation in the rear end when it's stuff like this they're technically more maintenance these are self lubing supposedly I believe that's Delrin um, but yeah anyways we'll see how it goes all right uh, now I got to put in so I got to put the axles in and the center section. So I think I'm going to do the center section bolts and then do the brakes. So, all right, back to it. So this video gets cut short because my battery died. But what I'm trying to do here is use a spacer instead of a bunch of washers like I should be using. Did not work. I stripped two nuts out doing that. I finally end up using washers, just a stack of washers. It gives it enough play. It goes right in. So... Yeah, anyways, glad it didn't record because it didn't turn out too great. So the studs are in. I tried to record it, but of course my camera died. So it ain't, I mean, use some washers, put it on top. Use one of those nuts because those are tough on mine. Anyways, now I got to put this on there. And it's going to suck because that's like 65, 75 pounds. So I don't know how I'm going to do that. Probably gonna ask my lady, cause she's a beast, so. She helped me put the old rear end in the car and I was telling her to hold it and she like lifted it up. I was like, oh crap, so yeah. Anyways, that's that thickness. Get my, my mind's in the gutter. Don't blame me. I'm sorry, get sidetracked. ADHD problems. Uh, yeah, so. I don't wanna do this, as you can tell, cause I'm still talking. So I'm gonna put some sealant on the around the things around the bolts and around the gaps between the bolts no gasket um and then yeah figure out how i'm gonna lift that and put it on there cool all right Came together nice, nice little bead around on the outside. Of course, I touched a little portion of it, messed it up, but yeah. Shout out to uh, Permatex. You know, I know you hate messing with those tubes that dry up and then crack. And trust me, do it. Just okay. Don't. Up to you. You gotta lay a giant bead like that, man. That would suck. You don't really need it that thick, but I'm not playing around. I ain't trying to have no leaks. I don't want to mess with it right now because I don't want to mess with that bead at all. I want to let it dry more. It was setting up already, but I just wanted to I want to let it set up nice and not smear it. Okay, so I'm going to put these axles in now. 35 spline monsters. I got to put these in. Um, so some say to put sealant some don't I'm just gonna put a really thin layer around here You shouldn't really have to but being I don't want to have to deal with it leaking. I'm just gonna put a little bit on there it Won't hurt. So yeah, enough talking back to it So I'm putting in the seals right now camera work is just horrible <laughs> But basically I just used a big, you know round shape to hit it in there and sliding in the axles put a little sealant on both the seal and the axle bearing which I'll touch on here shortly all right so axles in center sections in studs are in um, I put a little bit of sealant black RTV barely any really on this bearing and on the seal I don't think you need that um, you shouldn't need that but a lot of people online are saying to do it, so I've seen people's leak, so 
Yeah, rather be safe than sorry. But <laughs> this is how I'm doing it. I'm trying to turn it. I can't. Anyways, I'm weak. I've been doing hella hitting and lifting and shit. So don't take, don't take what I'm doing as gospel. Because again, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So follow at your own risk. But yeah, this is. That's it. That's the end of the rear end assembly. Now we get to the brakes. See you in the next one. Thanks for the support. Thanks for waiting. I know it's been a minute since I posted anything. So, all right, y'all. See you in the next one.